Croatia has approved its most ambitious defense outlay since independence, greenlighting a 1.945 billion euro modernization package that will overhaul the army's armored and artillery forces while ceding a domestic counter-drone capability. The plan, endorsed by the Parliamentary Defense Committee on October 30, 2025 and announced by Defense Minister Ivan Anuzic, centers on the purchase of 44 Leopard 2A8 main battle tanks from Germany. It also includes 18 Caesar 155mm Mk2 self-propelled howitzers, 420 Tatra T815-7 all-terrain trucks, and a national system for detecting and defeating hostile drones. Three elements, the tanks, guns, and trucks, will leverage European safe funding, while the counter-drone network is to be financed entirely from the national budget. Framework agreements are targeted before year's end, with deliveries staggered through 2030 to match training and sustainment timelines. The Leopard Tranche, valued at roughly 1.3 billion euros, extends far beyond hulls and turrets. Croatia's order bundles simulators, initial spares, and full logistic support, and it gives prominent roles to local industry, notably Duro Dukovic and Konkar, in assembly, maintenance, and component work. These arrangements reflect a wider trend in European rearmament that seeks to retain more value and know-how at home rather than outsourcing sustainment abroad. Croatian officials also cast the deal as the culmination of a Berlin Zagreb understanding dating to October 2024, when the sides paired Croatia's transfer of M84A4 sniper tanks and M80 infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine with price relief and bridging support from Germany including earlier Leopard 2A4 HRV deliveries to keep armored units operational while the new generation is built. The 2A8 variant that Croatia is buying represents the current apex of the Leopard family. Built by KNDS with rainmetal inputs, it combines upgraded passive protection with the Eurotrophy active protection system intended to counter both kinetic penetrators and tandem charge munitions. The Rainmetal 120mm L55A1 smoothbore gun enables both long-range armor defeat and programmable effects against structures and light targets, while a fully digital fire control suite, third-generation thermal imaging, laser rangefinding, and an advanced ballistic computer, aims to maximize first-round hit probability on the move. Power comes from a 1,500 horsepower MTU MB873 series diesel, preserving mobility despite the platform's high protection level. For Croatia, the transition away from Soviet lineage armor to a NATO standard fleet is intended to simplify ammunition lines, boost survivability, and align training and doctrine with key European partners already fielding the same tank type. Artillery and logistics form the second and third pillars of the package. The Caesar Mk2 purchase, to be finalized within a French-led multinational framework, includes not only the gun systems but also reconnaissance sensors, fire control components, communications gear, and supporting vehicles. Deliveries are planned by 2029, placing Croatia alongside regional users such as Estonia and Slovenia and allowing for common training and maintenance solutions. The truck program 420 Tatra T815-7 vehicles procured in coordination with the Czech Republic and Slovakia, will run from 2026 to 2030. Local assembly and sustainment by Duro Dukovic Spesijalna Vazila are intended to create a domestic backbone for logistics, from ammunition hauling to casualty evacuation, on a chassis that already meets NATO standards for ballistic and mine protection. In practice, these trucks will be the connective tissue for a more mobile and digitally networked force. The fourth component targets a threat that has reshaped battlefields from the Donbass to the Middle East, small drones. Valued at 125 million euros before VAT and scheduled for 2026 to 2029, Croatia's counter-drone effort will start with two fixed and two mobile systems to shield critical infrastructure and military sites. Konkar will act as prime integrator under a technology transfer arrangement with Poland's advanced protection systems, bringing elements of the SKYCTRL architecture into Croatian production. The first phase focuses on detection, jamming, and interception inside an AI-assisted command and control framework, 
while a second phase adds mobile units with 30mm guns networked into the same digital backbone. The concept is deliberately modular to absorb rapid advances in drone hardware and tactics, with software updates and domestic manufacturing capacity designed to reduce vulnerability to supply chain shocks. Zagreb is financing this push on the back of successive budget increases and a broader rearmament arc already in motion. The 2024 defense budget grew by more than a fifth year-on-year, -year, and 2025 advanced again by a high teens percentage. Parallel programs include the induction of Rafaeli multi-role fighters, acquisition of Baractor TB2 unmanned systems, the modernization of 62 of 89 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, upgrades to Patria AMVs, a new very short-range air defense layer, a deployable role, 2B field hospital, and the procurement of M142 HIMARS rocket launchers. The Coast Guard is receiving new patrol and mine countermeasure assets. Policymakers have set explicit top-line targets, exceed 2% of GDP on defense before 2027, rise to about 2.5% by 2027, and aim toward 3% by 2030. Officials argue that the newly approved land forces package is the anchor that allows the rest of the structure, air and maritime, to integrate coherently. Taken together, the commitments signal a decisive shift in Croatia's defense posture, from patchwork modernization to a coordinated, industrially grounded, NATO standard force. If contracts are signed on schedule and deliveries arrive as planned, the Army of 2030 will field a protected, networked armored corps, mobile tube artillery aligned with European partners, a logistics fleet built for contested environments, and a domestically supported shield against the proliferating drone threat. The choices are deliberately conservative in their reliance on widely used platforms, yet ambitious in the embrace of active protection, digital fire control, and AI-enabled defense. For a small state navigating an unsettled security landscape, that blend of interoperability, sustainability, and rapid adaptability is the point.